Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Tom Berkey, the interim head of Department of Animal Science at University of Nebraska. So Dr. Berkey, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Well, and, and thank you for the opportunity to, to be on the podcast. Um, I, uh, I've been at the University of Nebraska since uh, 2006. Uh, prior to that, uh, I did my graduate education, both master's and PhD degrees at Kansas State University. Um, after joining the faculty at, at the University of Nebraska, I've been working as a um, non-ruminant nutritionist uh, for, since, since 2006. Uh, my main interests are, are really the interactions between nutrition, gut microbes, and immunity. And I would say the, the major focal point of my, my research is on, on gut health of pigs and also um, as it pertains to, to human health. And then I also have a, a teaching appointment where I, I mainly teach graduate education classes in protein, amino acid nutrition, as well as a, a veterinary nutrition course to uh, first year veterinary students as part of the UNL ISU um, cooperative program in veterinary medicine. Awesome. So I read your study about supplementing soy holes and nursery pig diets and analyzing the sequel microbiome. Would you mind telling us about that study? Absolutely. So this was a an ex a series of experiments, really, that um, one of my latest um, doctoral student, Josh Knapp, uh, performed. Um, but the interest here was really in trying to see if we could develop a model where we either uh, had uh, groups of C-sectomized pigs or cecum cannulated pigs to see if we could really evaluate microbial changes within the pig uh, over time. And that's what the cecum cannula allowed us to do. It allowed us to take uh, samples from the cecum over time so we could get a, a better idea of the changes in the microbial community um, over time, but also um, at, in response to, to dietary changes. So in this particular study, we took um, 12 barrows uh, that were around uh, 20, 25 to 30 kilograms, so 60 to 65 days of age. And we had groups, uh, we had a control group, we had a cesectomized group, and we also had a cecum cannulated uh, group. And then we fed um, a high fiber diet versus a control, fiber, control diet without any added fiber. And the, the fiber source that we used in this particular uh, experiment was a, uh, a soy hole um, based fiber. And um, this I really see as a, a preliminary study. So some, some of the overall results from, from this particular preliminary study was that the pigs fed the high fiber diet had reduced feed intake compared to control pigs during the second week and the fourth week. And that the control pigs had greater body weight at uh, week two intended to have greater body weight than the high fiber pigs at week four. Um, overall, the community structure was different comparing cecal to fecal samples, um, but also the samples obtained at the conclusion of the experiment indicated that there may have been effects of dietary treatment in both cecal and fecal microbial community structure. And we hope to evaluate this a little bit more in depth in the future. So I think the kind of the overall message is that um, when you're when you're comparing pigs from a, a, fe a fecal versus a cecal perspective, um, those communities might be different. I think, and that also um, really applies to you know things like soluble versus insoluble fiber. So if you're thinking about the cecum, you would expect that you have greater soluble fiber fermentation in the cecum, whereas insoluble fiber, the the uh, area of fermentation is probably going to be more distal to the cecum in the in the colon and, and uh, more more distal hindgut. So I think it makes sense in some of the I think some of the observations that we observe make sense. And um, it'll be really in interesting to see when we do some follow up studies to see if uh, to really dig a little bit more deeper into the microbial community structure. 
Gotcha. So I actually did a little bit of work um, with a soluble fiber. I'm looking at some microbiome shifts in the sequel microbiome for my master's thesis. So that was a, a, a few years ago. Um, but of course, we use the soluble fiber, which you use soy holes, which is an insoluble fiber. And with the insoluble fiber, fiber being a little less utilizable in the cecum um, than a soluble fiber, fiber would you ex then expect larger shifts based on um, the soluble versus unsoluble fiber in the um, cecum as well as maybe possibly the fiber source? Yeah, I, I think it does depend. You know, and, and I guess if I took a step back and, and think about kind of the overall or the genesis of the idea for these experiments was that if you, in, in the literature, one of the things that you you might see is that that pigs can obtain up to 25% of their daily energy requirement from fiber fermentation. Um, obviously, that's going to vary a lot depending on whether you're talking about a, a wean pig or, you know, a, a 400 pound sow. And so we wanted to develop, try to develop this cecum cannulated model to really get at that question, you know, how much energy can we uh, obtain or can the animal obtain from fiber fermentation? And so, um, you know, to, to answer, to answer your question, I think it depends on the type of fiber, whether it's soluble or, or insoluble. It also depends on the the volume of the cecum, which is going to depend on the weight of the animal. And as that cecum develops from uh, from the time the pig is weaned to a 400 pound sow, on how much fermentation you're going to get in those specific areas of the gastrointestinal. Gotcha. And based on kind of some of those hypotheses that you've talked about, um, do you have any uh, upcoming steps or any plans for your research that kind of are in line with this? Or what do you guys really have planned next for your lab? Absolutely. So um, we would like to, I guess, recapitulate some of the same experiment. Um, but but and, and, and when we do that, we would love to... Um, take a deeper dive into kind of the, the metabolic capacity of those specific groups of microbes. So, um, for example, um, if you think about butyrate production, uh, butyrate is going to produce, be produced primarily via the fermentation of firmicutes. Um, propionate, for example, is going to be produced primarily through the, the fermentation by action of uh, bacteroides types of uh, our Bacteroides species. And so one of the things that I think we, we've done a pretty good job with in terms of that microbial nutrient animal interactions is knowing what types of bacteria, what species are there, but we need to know more about what their metabolic capacity is. And so I think for me, that's kind of the, the next step in this particular work is, first of all, can we can we repeat the model? And then if we can repeat the model, thinking a little bit more uh, intentionally about the types of fiber that we're feeding and how we take those samples from the cecum, compare them to fecal samples, but then also evaluate the metabolic capacity, the metabolic function of those groups of microbes that have been shifted because we know that diet is going to shift microbial composition. DSM can help you prepare, protect, and support resilience in your piglets, providing local swine expertise and complete, tailor-made solutions to help you achieve your vision. DSM Animal Nutrition and Health is shaping the future of pig care. Gotcha. Well, I'll definitely be looking to uh, looking for that research for when it comes out, but I think that's all we have time for. So thank you, Dr. Berkey, for coming on the show again today. Absolutely. One of the things that I've been involved with for several years is digestive physiology of pigs. So if you're familiar with digestive physiology of pigs, it was established in 1979. And I'm fortunate to be the president of digestive physiology of pigs, North America. North digestive physiology of pigs, North America was established uh, uh, through the work of Merlin Lindemann and John Patience. And we hosted our first international meeting in Keystone, Colorado in 2012, and we're fortunate to be able to host the next 
um, International Symposium, which is the 16th International Symposium of Digestive Physiology of Pigs. And that's going to be in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, uh, at the Grand Geneva Resort in May of 2025. Yep, and everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.